The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. All right. Well, Brandon, first of all, thank you for being here on the show today. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity uh, yeah, to be here. It's again. my pleasure. And uh, you've got a great big fan base out there. And, uh, and uh, I, I, we get all the emails and the, and the input, and I'm glad that you're able to be back. Uh, Brandon's uh, work takes him all over the Gulf Coast, and he's up and down the Gulf Coast and uh, all, all the time and all throughout the southeast, as a matter of fact. But uh, the last several Fridays, he's been able to be here in the studio with me. Now, he's also an avid researcher, and when this story broke Listen, several years ago, when Obama was a senator, and I don't want to give all this away, but he had some deep connections to uh, Kenya that almost got him in trouble. Uh, he, he broke some uh, some rules and almost got in trouble when he was a senator for involving himself in Kenyan politics. But now, of course, he's in the Oval Office. He has commandeered the office of the White House. Uh, he, he calls himself president. I refuse to call him president until I, I see some identification on him. But, uh, but now... Now we have the Kenyan Mall terrorist attack, and we've got all these things going on. The upset of the Kenyan politics and the rewriting of Kenyan poli- uh, the Constitution, and, and we've got new leaders in Kenya. But we discover that Obama is connected to all of this. Is there anything horrible in the world that Obama's not connected to directly? He's connected to the Muslim Brotherhood. He's connected to politicians in evil places. This is amazing. Brandon, I'm going to hush and let you tell us what you have found out. Absolutely. And we're going to touch on everything you just said. So let's just uh, let's just start where you just said uh, when Obama, before he was even elected to the presidency, right? In 2006, when right. he was just a just a senator, he makes a trip to Kenya to support a gentleman running in the uh, Kenyan presidential elections at that, that time, I Mr. Remember. Odinga. I remember that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, here's where things kind of start to get interesting. We find out that Mr. Odinga is from the same tribe as Barack Obama's purported father. Right. Who would be Barack Obama Sr., supposedly his daddy. Supposedly his father. Okay. But okay. Odinga's from the same tribe. From the same tribe. So okay. already we have a connection here, okay? okay? Okay. So they're from the same tribe. All right. So Obama makes this trip to Kenya, says he's just going, no, no reasons. He goes there. He spends a week there. Every single day of that week, he campaigns for and with Mr. Odinga publicly. Okay. Right. Uh, promoting him for the presidency. Okay. Then we find out that previous to making that trip, that he, Barack Obama had sent his foreign policy advisor to Kenya ahead of time. Okay. Now, this is while he's a senator. While he's a senator. So why is an American senator right. involving himself in a foreign, foreign country's government, yeah. presidency? And, and I don't remember the name of it, but there is a, a law against that. Do you, do you happen to have that? You know, I, I don't have that here okay. with me, but, but I know that came but, up. But I remember it did come up through all of that, and there was talk of impeaching him when he was a senator because of it. But go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So we see him go there. We see him campaign for a week with this Mr. Odinga. Okay. Right. Well, time goes on. Mr. Odinga loses the election. Right. Okay. Now, after he loses the elections, we immediately see violent riots break out throughout Kenya. I remember that. Now, Dr. Jerome Corsi uncovered through some of his research and has it documented uh, in several articles as well as one of his books, an email chain tying Barack Obama to laying out the strategy for Mr. Odinga of uh, inciting riots should he lose. And the man does lose, and riots break out. And riots break out. All of a sudden, after the riots break out... Now, this is important about the riots, okay? These riots were almost all, almost 100% Muslims literally slaughtering Christians. Uh-huh. Most of these riots took place against Christian churches while, and this is documented, Washington Times, I'm looking at the article right here from 2008, not one single mosque was harmed. Uh-huh. But we have literally, by the time it's over with, thousands of Christians slaughtered by these people rioting on behalf of Mr. And Kandinga. it's a predominantly Christian nation. Predominantly Christian. And you know, that was fascinating to me. I had no idea when I started researching this. Kenya is 84% Christian and only 11% Muslim. Yeah. But yet Obama laid out a plan to create riots if the guy loses, and the riots did ensue, and it turns out to be Muslim on Christian, and it's a slaughter. Absolutely. Okay. So now, 
we find out. And by the way, this is why I told you guys not to vote for this man back in 2008 when I was saying, guys, you've got to know his past. You've got to know his past. It's horrible. And I was telling some of you, and some of you called me up and called me a racist. But here we are, all these years later, and the chickens are coming home to roost. Go ahead. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, here we are. Mr. Odinga doesn't get elected. We see the riots break out, okay? They're slaughtering Christians. All right. Mr. Odinga, for the longest time, uh, denies the fact of any connection to any any Muslim groups, right? Okay, then several uh, major leaders of Muslim groups come forward with these documents that he has signed, tying them tying himself directly to these radical Muslim groups. So then, what does he do? He denies the denial of being attached to the Muslim groups. Now, wait a minute. You're telling me that a guy that's connected with Obama is a professional liar. Now, how can that be? Because Obama never lies. Birds he, of he, a feather flock together. <laughs> Obama, <laughs> Obama never denies that he denied that he denied the truth. I mean, he never does yeah. that. What? I didn't set a red line. The world did. <laughs> That's right. I didn't set a red line. The world set the red line. I never did that. Anyway, go ahead. Right. Okay. So, you know, now, it, it, this just gets really weird because after Mr. Odinga loses the election, okay, then we see this new position created inside of Kenya – uh, to where he becomes prime minister. Mr. Odinga becomes prime minister of Kenya. After he loses the election. After elections, he loses just, the presidential just, elections and incites these violent riots, he magically right. becomes prime minister. Right, magically. Okay? Now, the people that were involved in him becoming prime minister, are you ready for this group <laughs> I, I, of people? I, I okay. Guess. Now, when I said earlier that we don't have Republicans and Democrats right. in Washington, we have one group of thugs running the whole thing right. under two different names. All right, give us the names of who created this position in Kenya. Then Senator Barack Obama. Right. He was an instrumental. We wouldn't be surprised at that. UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. then Miss Condoleezza Rice. Uh-huh. Then Secretary Who was State. serving as Secretary of State under, under George W. Bush. Under George W. Bush. Yes. Now, do we have documentation of this? Absolutely. Uh, actually, that comes out of some documentation uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi brought forth. Okay. Yeah, okay. Through so, Daily. so Condoleezza Rice was involved with, uh, 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 what's the guy from the U.N.? Help me. Kofi Annan. Kofi, uh, Kofi Annan or Annan or however they say it. All right. And, of course, Barack Obama, who was a senator, in magically creating this position for the guy that lost the presidential election and incited the slaughter of Christians under the flag of Islam, and then to reward him for, instead of executing him for being a war criminal and a, and a mass murderer, they rewarded him by creating a position of governmental leadership in Kenya. All right, but the story gets deeper. Yes, it does. Once he's prime minister and he's in this uh, position of authority, he is allowed to make some changes to the Kenyan constitution. Right. Which allows for basically the onset of uh, Muslim radical extremism inside of Kenya. Now, keep in mind, 11% Muslim population, why are we being forced, right. trying to force this into a Muslim nation? Well, what we see happen over time is this opens the door for a flood of radical Muslims out of what country? Somalia. Somalia comes into Kenya. Okay. Now, who just attacked the mall in Kenya? Where were these radical terrorists from? They're right. from Somalia. Right. So, you know, we already see a connection of how you know, Obama helping this guy, trying to help him get elected, right. then seeing to it that it made sure that he gets in office, it's prime minister, right. makes changes to the Constitution. And, and let me just stop you right there, because the changes to the Constitution was what he wanted to do by getting this guy elected to president. They said that, that if they could get him elected to president, they were going to change the Constitution. But the people voted him down, so Obama was instrumental in getting him a governmental office anywhere where he could changed the Constitution, which opened the door for a flood of radical Muslims to come in. Gee, you don't think Obama's doing that in America, do you? Well, you know, I mean, it sure looks that way. And, and throughout the Middle East, you right. know, I mean, all over the world, anywhere he can get his hand of Libya, influence in, we see this happening. Syria. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, like I say, we see this great connection here, that the flood of terrorists in from Somalia. We see this attack on the mall here, and it's Somalian, uh, right. you know, Somalia, radical, Muslim radical Muslim terrorists. Muslim. Mm -hmm. All right, now, if you notice, most of our media here in the United States it refuses to use the term Muslim, radical right. Muslim, or right. Islamist. Right. We're just going to say it. That's right. what they are. That's right. Okay? Or terrorists. Yes. That's right. Okay. They're, they're out of Somalia. So we see this. Now, this is just a tidbit. During Mr. Odinga's uh, presidential run, he hired a gentleman out of the United States, and this name is going to probably shock some people, as a political advisor, uh -huh. Dick 
Morris. Dick Morris Dick was Morris. Odinga's political advisor. Dick Morris got deported from Kenya during the whole presidential campaign by the then sitting president of Kenya. Why? B because, because, because of his involvement with Odinga. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh! So Dick Morris gets deported from Kenya. Yeah, for, now, for, but 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 Barack Obama didn't. But Obama didn't. Yeah, I, maybe he's a citizen there. I don't know. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. well, listen, we're going to take a time out. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got some startling information about Obama's relationship to some people in Kenya that are they're now saying that he is related to them, right? Absolutely. Okay, okay. And and more stuff. Folks, see why you don't want to miss this? Guarantee you you're not going to hear this on the news tonight. Guarantee you have not heard it on another conservative talk radio show today. But you're hearing it on Freedom Friday. Aren't you glad you're listening? Carl Gallops, Brandon Gallops, Mallory Bardwell, we'll be back with you in just a second. Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. How can one man bother so many people by simply telling the truth? Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, welcome back, America. Freedom Friday, and my co-host this afternoon, Brandon Gallops. He also happens to be my special guest this half hour because I asked him to do some research into Obama's Kenyan connections, and he has uncovered some amazing, amazing stuff. So, Brandon, let's continue on. Talk to us about relationships, Obama and relationships in Kenya. No, absolutely. There had been a lot of speculation that, that uh, Obama and this Odinga fellow had a deeper tie than just their political ties. Mm -hmm. Well, in January 2008, Mr. Odinga gives an interview to the BBC, and he said, says, quote, Barack Obama's father is my maternal uncle. They're first cousins. <laughs> so that makes them first cousins. Right. So, so Obama as a senator going over to Kenya trying to help his first cousin to become president with the intention of changing the Constitution to be more Muslim friendly. Now, this is why he's a senator, folks. This is why I was screaming over the radio back in 2008, please don't put this Muslim in the White House. Please don't do it. But I was called a racist and an idiot and a, you know, a, a, a crazy preacher. But anyway, here we are. But so that was happening. And he also instructed this dude, if you lose the election, here's how you start riots. And then that happened. The guy lost. Riots ensued. Muslims on Christians. There were slaughters. And so Obama and his cronies and Condoleezza Rice and all these other people you named were instrumental in setting this Odinga up. Creating, instead of putting him in prison and executing him as a mass murderer, they actually created a government position wherein he had the power to change the Constitution. Now radical Muslims are flooding the country of Kenya. And then we now know this dude, Odinga, who's basically creating all this havoc over there, is Barack Obama's first cousin. It's according to Mr. Mr. Odinga. He, they according are first cousins. to Mr. Odinga. Yeah. He could be lying about that, but he said that they are first cousins. Yeah, yeah. At the very least, uh, Mr. Odinga and Obama's father are from the same tribe. Right. So, But Odinga says they're first cousins. So, you know, it still doesn't just quite all make sense, right? So, you know, kind of like with all this stuff we see, let's follow the money trail. Right, right, right. Where's the money come where's from and where's the money going? Right. We see all this turmoil in the Middle East, Kenya, Libya. Uh, you know, we see uh, the events in Syria. And we keep here in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is behind this. Saudi Arabia is behind this. What? Why would Saudi Arabia want turmoil in the Middle East? What would they stand to gain? Mm -hmm. If they can cause turmoil in the entire Middle East, then what do they have complete control over? Mm -hmm. The oil supply. The oil. Mm -hmm. The oil supply. Saudi Arabia has been tied to our government for a long, long time. Think about the Bush connection to Saudi right. Arabia. Right. Best friends. You know, I mean, right. and, you know, reportedly. Right. Um, you know, it came out uh, some years later that the day after 9-11 happens, one plane leaves the country. Yeah. And who's on it? Yeah. Saudi Arabia. Members of the Saudi royal family. Right. So if this is true... Then you know. Then what's going on here? Who's calling the shots? Now this gets really interesting because Barack Obama's step, uh, excuse me, not step brother. Um, yeah, step brother. Step brother. No, half brother. Yeah, Malik. Yeah, Malik Obama. Yeah. Malik Obama. Half same father. Half brother. Same, yeah. okay. same father. Different mother. Yeah. Excuse half, me. Brother. Right, half brother. Half okay. brother. <laughs> he has a 501c3 uh -huh. inside the United States uh -huh. that operates under the name. Barack H. Obama Foundation. 
Okay. There's also a separate foundation controlled by Malik, and I believe it's his wife, uh, inside the United States called the Mama Sarah Obama Foundation. Mama Sarah Obama. Now, another uh, friend of Freedom Friday, Waleed Shubat, has yes. done a lot of research and a lot of writing on this and where these two foundations, where their money goes. Okay. All right. Reportedly, a lot of the, the money out of the Barack H. Obama Foundation goes it gets filtered directly through the Muslim Brotherhood. Right. I, I mean, I know that sounds ridiculous, but... No, it doesn't the, it, sound I mean, ridiculous to me. <laughs> the, the trail is there. Yeah. But get this now. The Mama Sarah Obama Foundation, all right? This is documented by Waleed Chibat. I'm reading right, off, right out of his article. 90% of those funds are transferred, all right? They're raised in the U.S., and they are transferred to send Kenya students to the top three most radical Wahhabist uh -huh. schools Wahhabi in Saudi school. Arabia. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the Wahhabi uh, sect of, of of Islam is the most radical. They're the, they're the ones that just supply most of the terrorists the most radical to the world. Sect, right but, now, with everything that's happened with the IRS and what we've heard about them targeting, uh -huh. uh, you know, Tea Party members, uh -huh. Christians, uh, conservatives. Get this, okay? In 2011, the Barack H. Obama Foundation apparently received IRS approval one month after an application was submitted in May. Right. So in 30 some odd days. They get their 501c3 status. It's yeah. a done deal. No yeah. problem. They get okay. theirs. No problem. But this is crazy. All right. Uh, the IRS determin determination letter granted a highly irregular retroactive tax-exempt approval only after the group came under fire for operating as a 501c3 since 2008 without uh, uh, IRS approval. If you or I Whoa. said we were a 501c3, send and us we your money, it's tax-deductible, and we weren't, we'd, we'd be in prison. We'd all be in prison, and all the money would be confiscated, our buildings and assets would be confiscated, and we'd be in prison for years and years. Exactly right. So we see but two foundations set up inside. Now, not to mention this, Malik Obama? Yeah is a resident, a legal resident of the United States. This dude from Kenya who's involved in Kenyan politics. Muslim Brotherhood, just Saudi comes out Arabia. Yesterday, but he's a, he's a citizen. Uh, Egypt, Egypt is considering banning him for his ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah, so Egypt don't want him. They'll, they'll, they'll ban him because an Egyptian, a Muslim nation is going to ban the president's stepbrother, because he is uh, connected to Muslim Brotherhood, but the United States is going to give him shelter and aid and comfort. And, yeah, right. Now, we have to give credit where credit is due. Waleed and Ted Shubat have been calling this out for a year now yes, about Malik Obama. Yep. They have been all over this, screaming, this guy's Muslim Brotherhood, he's Muslim Brotherhood, he's using money out of the United States, filtering it through the Muslim Brotherhood. Okay. Right. So they've been all over this for a year. Finally, just this last week, Malik Obama... Is so much pressures on him. Egypt is looking for him. Shabbat's been calling him out, and that he finally has to address it. And of course, he comes out and says, "I have no affiliation with the Muslim Brotherhood." Yes, yes. But let's see where it goes from here, because he's finally at least been forced to address the issue. Right, right. Wow, wow. This is amazing stuff, Brandon. We're going to have to have you back, either live in studio or getting you on the phone as you continue to uncover this amazing uh, information for us. Again, folks, you're not going to hear this anywhere else but Freedom Friday. That's why you got to listen every Friday. That's why you got to get other people to listen. Listen, go to carlgallops.com, check out my two books, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah and The Magic Man in the Sky. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.